This is lesson number one, and, I, and I've always listened to my gut, my intuition. It's something that I've always done, and it's always worked out for me. Something was telling me you need to go to the ER. Hey guys, Izzy and MJ from Endless RVing. Today we're gonna to do a video that's a little bit different. It might become a little emotional and raw because I know that's something that really affected MJ. So we did a video, you know, six or eight months ago, why it was the perfect time to buy an RV. And we're gonna link that above. In that video, we said that one of the reasons it's the perfect time to buy an RV is because that tomorrow is not promised to anyone, right? Time doesn't wait for anyone. So really, RVing, one of the big things about RVing is living life to the fullest as best you can at this point. And you know, MJ had a recent experience and she's gonna talk about this. This video is mostly gonna be about her talking. She just wants to share this, you know, maybe it will change somebody or, or maybe it won't, but I'll just let you go mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, this is a really, Kind of raw um it's recent and i had debated should we talk about it and i i said you know because we're kind of private people but i said you know what this was life-changing for me and if i can help even one person maybe look at life a little differently then it would be worth it so here goes i'm just going to tell you the story of what happened this was just actually what's today thursday we're filming this this was two weeks ago today 18th yeah actually yeah two it weeks was two weeks day. ago two weeks ago i woke up i worked out hard for 45 minutes like i always do my heart was pumping i went to pt for my shoulder i just you know normal day that morning though i went to uh, a doctor just for a routine thing that i got an antibiotic for no big deal so i had asked izzy i said on the way home from work can you grab the antibiotic for me he did got home a little early that day so around three o'clock i took this antibiotic and within a half an hour I started to get some really weird symptoms. My neck was started to hurt, my head started pounding, and literally within an hour, I was shaking uncontrollably. My fever went up to almost 103. I was violently vomiting, sorry, um, but it's true. It was bad, it was really bad. Now, I didn't know what it was mm -hmm. um i thought maybe i caught you know i think a covid or the flu or something i was stumped i said all right well maybe if i go to bed or whatever but this is lesson number one and i and i've always listen to my gut my intuition it's something that i've always done and it's always worked out mm -hmm. for me so if you don't please listen to your gut and something was telling me you need to go to the ER. This is not a lay in bed flu that you're just gonna get over with Tylenol, go. And I said this to him, I said, I need to go. Just so her condition declined very rapidly. So we were supposed to go out to eat that night. Mm -hmm. And you, you, after you said like, I'm not really feeling well, I'm like, oh, do you want me to go get food? So I did. That was probably about what, 45 minutes? Yeah. When I got back, it was, she was completely different to the point that I became a little concerned and I kind of had to be like stone face. But I remember when you're walking down the stairs, I don't know if you remember this, I'm like, can you, can you talk to me? Like, yeah, cause, yeah, because yeah. I want, it, to me, it looked like she was gonna lose consciousness, in, yeah. my, in my opinion, just from and my I, experience. Yeah, and and I, I made her talk to me and we actually drove to the hospital. Right, so we went to the hospital, I went into the ER. At this point, my blood pressure was 85 over 51, I think, which is really bad. And they said, we're getting you in right away. Unfortunately, at this point, Izzy had to leave in New Jersey, the wonderful state of New Jersey. Very progressive here. Yeah, uh, no visitors, and that was it. I didn't see him for quite a while, and I'll get to that. But uh, he was gone, and I was in the ER, and you know, the, the IV and everything. My blood pressure dropped even more. It was like 70 something over 30. It was, it was really bad. They got IV, they got drugs in me. Nobody knew what was going on. I was there for hours, hours. And uh, finally, at 3 a.m., so I think we got to around 7 30 p.m at yeah. 3 a.m i was admitted to the hospital i went to a room everything about my hospital experience was wonderful except this the doctor would not respond the nurses were reaching out to the on-call doctor no response for five hours i was there sick sick with no water no food it was it was really bad i was i was scared and so 
I waited till the morning and uh, finally the doctor responded. They came and they rushed into the nurses. They hooked me up to the IV. They got everything going. So this was Friday and uh, I found out that a bunch of doctors started coming in throughout the day. I had drug induced hepatitis. My liver levels, which should be between 20 and 40, had shot up to 1300. Prescription drug. Just yes. to be clear. So th we had started now seeing that this was the antibiotic that I took that was causing this. Perfectly healthy. I've always been pretty healthy, you know, a couple little things here and there. So the doctor, the infectious disease doctor said, you have hepatitis. I said, what? What? Yeah, my numbers were 1,300. Um, this is drug-induced by the antibiotic. So they started, you know, doing things to help help that. My fever would not break. It would not break from 102 all day, no matter what they did. Problem was now the Tylenol, they had to stop giving me Tylenol because that would mess with my liver. My liver was obviously suffering anyway. A couple hours later, about seven people rushed into the room. The rapid response team, apparently my heart rate was just through the roof and now this is where everything really got scary because they gave me iv meds immediately to try to bring my heart rate down they were doing all different things now at this point i was completely out of it. i mean i was awake but i had such a fever i felt like death at this point also i i didn't know if they didn't know anything you know they knew this drug was causing problems i didn't know if i had a blood infection i didn't know if i was going to leave the hospital so you start thinking you know immediately at this point now your life starts changing you know your out your outlook starts changing things that you used to be scared and before or you used to get pissed off or whatever suddenly didn't matter all I was thinking about is that I have a son at home, I have a husband at home, and that's all that mattered at that point. So they moved me quickly to the cardiac unit and, um, you know, did whatever they needed to do. I, that was Friday night. And so I was there from Friday until uh, Tuesday. Luckily, by Saturday, things started to somewhat stabilize. My fever finally started to come down. My liver numbers slowly, slowly started to come down. It actually didn't really fully come down until this a uh, couple days yeah. ago. It took about a week and a half at least for them to come back to normal. But at this point, what was happening now is that my heart, I was going into AFib, like nonstop. It was up, down, it, it, palpitations, it was out of control. So I was getting all different medications. They started me on a blood thinner, they started me, and again, for somebody as healthy as myself, this was really, really hard to grasp, really hard for my ego really hard just all around to, to see myself going through this. Somebody as active and, and athletic and healthy as myself. They s finally started to get my heart rate to somewhat settle. And it, long story short, by Tuesday, you know, mm -hmm. I, was, I was doing much, much better. Everything had stabilized. They had started me on heart medications and by Tuesday I was able to and I actually really pushed for myself to get out they didn't want me to go because my liver levels still were low anyway I was discharged on Tuesday a week and a half ago mm -hmm. and since then my heart has just not been behaving they were had me on certain medication not the one they wanted to because of my liver levels but thank God I'm lucky to say that yesterday my liver levels were finally normal and I'm on a medication that the AFib has seemed to stop. As of today, uh, today's Thursday, what's today's date? 17th? 17th. 18th, sorry, 18th. 18th. So tomorrow I have an appointment with the cardiologist that I saw in the hospital and we're going to discuss procedures and you know, look, there's procedures that you can do, ablation that can get you back to normal. I just want to be back to normal. Nobody seems to know why this happened. I think my body just went into such a trauma and maybe this was dormant and I don't know, it could be genetic as well. Some in my family, a couple people in my family had it. My point of this video is to share with you not really what happened, but what the result of it was. When I came home, I said, life needs to change. I am the type of person, if you haven't known this, and if Izzy is just like me, we are perfectionists. We have to do everything the best we possibly can. It's never good enough. Now. For two people that ha that live this way, it can be really awesome because you get stuff done. But 
at what expense, right? So I, in the hospital, made a list of things for myself that I promised that I would change. I'm a spiritual person, but now I'm even more spiritual. And I'm meditating on a daily basis. And I realize that it's okay if I'm not the best at everything I do. I realize if we can only put out two videos a week, I know you may have to relax, but... You might see me alone on videos <laughs> once in a while. But that's okay, <laughs> because it doesn't... Nothing matters if you don't have your life and your health. And in, since I got home a week ago, my life has been so different. I'm walking slower. I'm talking slower purposefully. I'm living life more... I guess at a slower pace and it feels really, really good. And I'm not taking things as personal. And if you leave a nasty comment on this, we're just gonna delete it and we're just gonna block you. Yeah, we've taken that and stance now. It's, it's it's just like, sorry to interrupt you. It's just like the trolls out there, not only are you gonna get deleted, we're just gonna block you. If you leave nasty comments, if, if you, not, not criticism. No, 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 no. But if you leave but profanities outward, and yeah, your, your nonsense yeah. political, we just block yeah, and delete. Yeah, I mean, gone. It, because it just doesn't matter anymore. What matters is life and being happy mm -hmm. and doing what makes us passionate. And all these things really became clear to me in the hospital. And like I said, being at a point where I didn't know if I was going to come home. And I guess my point of the video is really to not take things so seriously and focus on the important things in life, slow down and, and just really love the life that you're living because you only get one shot, okay? And like we said about buying an RV, you know, if you wanna do it, then God dang it, go do it, you know, because tomorrow isn't promised. Mm -hmm. And this really was life changing for me. I'm grateful for it. I'm beyond grateful for it because I think the universe had been trying to tell me to slow down for a long time and I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Well, now it's time. And some really good things have come out of this, more so that you've let go of some of the responsibilities from your business and, and business has done just fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that gives her more free time to be creative and do other things. Mm -hmm. and, and one really important thing is, you know, you said you're healthy and one of the things that the doctors had told her because the question is, you know, why I'm healthy, why does this happen? Right. Because she had a bad reaction to medication, but because MJ does work out a lot, her heart, that's the only issue, her heart was perfect mm -hmm. other than this AFib. So she's really the perfect candidate to have this stuff corrected. You know, if she was not taken care of, this could have been much worse. Mm -hmm. It certainly could have. Right. And maybe it uncovered something that would have been worse 20 years down the line. Mm -hmm. So everything happens for a reason. She's back. She's, we're doing well. We're going to keep putting videos out and doing what we do. But, you know, it's just we, we figured we needed to put that out there. And I, I do want to say publicly that this man is amazing. He does get stuff done. And when I was in the hospital, it was like six days almost, five, six days, that I didn't have to worry about anything. He took care of everything. We still got the videos out. Social yeah. media was a little slow because that's usually that's my thing. thing. Yeah. So you know, I kind of had to juggle work and the dogs. And yeah, Jason I mean, he was doing videos. he was doing everything, and I, I just want to you know publicly say I'm just so lucky to have you, and it just made everything so much easier. All right, enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> so in the comments below, let us know: um, Have you had some kind of life-altering experience, and is that one of the reasons why you RV? Right? Yeah. And yeah. for myself and MJ, who's back? Thank you guys for watching and we'll see, see you on the road. road.